Not who Mikey P, Mike Probozzi. Uh, and I get to cover Haskell Day on video. PTF having a computer issue. Uh, I don't know if everyone has seen these computer outages. It's it's grounding planes. It's grounded Pete, even though he's hanging out in San Diego. I'm the deputy once again, and I get to sit next to one of my favorite handicappers in the world. I would say I am a Nick Tamaro disciple. So sitting next to you, Nick, I'm I'm very happy to talk races. I appreciate it very much. That's kind of you. I'm a Mike Probosi fan. So it's, <laughs> nice. uh, we'll stop this love fest now before anybody gets too sick of it and, and get into the brass tacks, right? Well, three-year-olds and uh, Glamour Boys, Haskell is upon us uh, mid-July and uh, one of the huge stops. And winning you're in for the Classic now for the Haskell, uh, I, I can think back to lots of Haskells that uh, I just have a lot of great memories. Uh, I, I was at the Haskell. Uh, you know, when action this day won, uh, I was a huge Rachel Alexander fan when she won the Haskell. I thought that that was one of the best performances I've ever seen. So uh, are you excited for the Haskell? Get these three-year-olds back rolling? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I've been to three Haskells, thought of it the other day. I was actually at Rachel's and uh, was at uh, the 2014 when Byron wired the field and, of course, went on to win the Breeders' Cup Classic. And then I was there um, in 2022 when Cyberknife held off um uh Taba. So it was a good, yeah, it's a fun day. It's a really Mammoth's a great track too. So really excited to talk about their racing in any capacity because uh, Mammoth is a place that if you've never been, do what you can to get there. It's uh, well worth it. And this is always a really fun day of racing. And I think this Haskell, while it may not have a ton of field size, it may not be all that deep in terms of who can actually win. I do think it's a fun race and and I'm looking forward to seeing how it shakes out. It is a fun race. And it's it's the start of the second half of the year for these three-year-olds. And you get some of these late developing types. You, know, you get some of the triple crowns. But interesting that Mr. Baffert is absent this year because typically he has a stranglehold on this race. Yeah, I know the discussion was that he was going to run parenting and, and he was unable to make it, um, I think, falling behind a little bit with some of his training. But uh, so it'll, I'm sure Bob will be back in, in, in abundance in the future, but it actually sets up a situation where Todd Fletcher now has the, the main contenders and Todd has not been all that active in the Haskell really. I mean, Todd's barn is geared so heavily towards the first half of the year and getting horses to Churchill that sometimes him having horses ready for the Haskell is just not really much of a priority, but the way things have shaken out this year, he's been able to develop horses that were going to be designed more for the back half of the season. And I think that's undoubtedly the case with, uh, with mind frame who we're going to be talking about in addition to his stable mate fierceness as an ultimate decision is made on who's going to be running there. Um, but uh, it, it does create a nice scenario where you've got horses that obviously show talent earlier in the year, trying to prove whether they're still there. Some triple crown horses that obviously ran well that are looking now towards the second half of the season. Yeah. Pletcher definitely loaded. And uh, it's interesting. He, he is showing up in the Haskell this year and, and it might have something to do with the fact too, that, that he just has a couple of horses that he needs to find spots for plus no Baffert. I mean, just a, a lot of different things in his favor and uh, lots of big stakes though. It's a huge day. They usually have huge handle on uh, Haskell day. And uh, we're going to talk stakes here. And, and there's always a lot of fun stakes races on Haskell day. I, I really enjoy the, the turf races. You got the, some of the big jockeys. Pratt shows up here. Irad shows up here. Uh, Jose Ortiz. So, all the big boys are here, and uh, we're going to give you some stakes. Uh, we'll start in race number five, and, and it's the grade three matchmaker. And, and a lot of times this is, is run in, in the back half of the card. It shows up in race five this year. It's a mountain eighth on the grass and a pretty nice field here, Nick. It is a good field. Yeah, it's, you know, these races a lot of years really go as Chad goes. And uh, the matchmaker is a race that he's had a lot of success in over the years. And he'll have a major contender, a pair of them once again. Um, in the two morning line favorites. I think the I think the morning line maker was a little generous in making two horses three to one uh, or one horse three to one and two horses seven to two. I think that you're going to see quite a bit more support for a horse like Delahaye than seven to two, given the way she's improved in her last couple of starts. But Butch Cache, who won the, uh, the Jenny Wiley, is back looking for redemption. I think what we saw, Mike, in the Just a Game is that the Butch Cache uh, – uh, Jenny Wiley race, it, it was sort of a, I like to call it the Las Vegas type of race where what happens there stays there, right? It just mm -hmm. didn't, 
is not going to be duplicated anywhere else. She came back and ran poorly in the just a game. I think it was a function of her getting the lead and, and doling out those fractions. And I really don't see her. There's not a ton of speed in here, but I don't see her enjoying that same type of trip this time around. I think Delahaye is a far likelier winner. And I would assume that there's going to be some other pace in here. Chad also has Mama on June who ran second in the Eaton town, which is a local prep for this race. Chad actually ran one, two in there with tax implications, winning the race. And Mama June actually ran very well rallying for second into a slow pace. So I'm not going to be surprised if she is, uh, is part of the mix here when all is said and done, but ultimately I think De Delahaye is the horse to beat and, and I'm expecting her to keep this run of strong races going. Yeah, I could see it. Uh, and Chad, he has some tough ones in here. How about that? The ride though, uh, from Frankie there, uh in that keeneland race on the seven that that was i mean really i think he won the race that day just uh, got her out to the front and was able to gallop along and, and then uh, just refused to be caught and like you said maybe those sort of circumstances uh might not ever happen again but she raced well in the matriarch also so uh, you know she's got some class to her too um i, I really liked how mom on june ran in the prep i just they walked in the front 51 and she was dead last the entire way around and just was airborne late. I mean, came flying and, and now you know, she has a win over the racetrack. She has a second over the racetrack. And uh, like you said, they're all bunched up on the morning line. I mean, six horses are between three to one and five to one in this race. So, I mean, obviously very competitive race. Uh, I, I do. I don't think that they can go any slower than they did last time. And, and you never know which Chad's going to show up. But uh, I do think that she could be the one that's going to be flying fastest late. It's just a matter of circumstances. Is she going to be able to get there? Yep, I agree. I think that'll be what it boils down to ultimately. Um, I don't really see it being all that contentious beyond that. I know surprisingly could perhaps get a little bit of support having raced forwardly in the New York before tiring to run fourth. She just hasn't really quite had that punch at a mile and an eighth that I think is necessary to be successful. Maybe save the uh, the Pegasus, which I don't often look for Todd Pletcher horses to duplicate the type of efforts they put forth in Florida really anywhere else. So I think Chad wins this thing. He's pretty much got a lock on it. What's your take on the three real quick though, uh, Olivia Morada? That was a, uh, I thought a pretty nice race at Keeneland. I actually bet her at Santa Anita in the game lane. I thought she raced really well. Uh, uh, Anna set was, you know, I kind of got the jump on her there. Uh, so, you know, she comes back, but uh, you know, Pratt obviously lands with Chad. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, uh, I don't know really how much Olivia Miralda will class up. That was a great one in name only. And, and really West coast, her form really has, has sort of never been weaker uh, to be perfectly honest. I don't know if she's quite good enough, but I do think she's interesting and she's certainly a horse with some upside eligible for two other thens, but obviously now deserving of being in graded stakes races based on what we've seen so far. Well, that race starts up pick five, lots of multi-race action for Saturday at Monmouth. Uh, let's go to the sixth race. And this one starts at 50 cent pick four. It's a Molly pitcher going for 500,000. And I would imagine the 500,000 is the reason that idiomatic shows up here. Yeah. I was able to smoke out idiomatic as a pretty likely winner of this race. <laughs> you know, you have to, you got to wake up early to, uh, to, to catch me off guard, but um, no, she's three to five on the morning line, likely to be that or less when all is said and done. I think that what's going to, what you're going to see here is the connections learning their lesson from the uh, from the, the uh, Ogden Phipps, which is a race that she exits in, in now a prep for the personal ensign, which is that uh, Florent was a little too conservative and allowed randomized to set a very slow pace and ultimately made Idiomatic's job a little bit too tough. So I'm going to expect Idiomatic to be put right on the lead. I think she's going to wire this field. I think it probably will have uh, no anxious moments whatsoever. And I think in five weeks or so, when we see her on Travers Day in the personal ends, and you're going to see a much more forwardly placed trip again, where she is likely right on the hip of a horse like Randomized, um, if they are, are able to square off again there. So not really much I have to add to that. I think this is sort of a, a walkover in many ways for Idiomatic. Yeah, uh, just uh, just such a class edge. And she's just so good. And to lose to Randomize, who obviously loves Saratoga. I mean, uh, I think that one has a big advantage over that racetrack. Yeah. There's no Randomize in this race whatsoever. And, uh, yeah, it's just – it's one of those races that you you, you almost take the free square and, and get involved uh, elsewhere. But it, it's fun to watch her show up and do her thing. And I, and I agree. I, I do think that aggressive uh, ride definitely looms in this race. Race nine, five and a half furlongs, Wolf Hill uh, going for a hundred thousand. And uh, this is uh, the start of the five hundred thousand dollar guaranteed 50 cent pick four. Uh, it's all stakes, so and, and it'll uh, finish up in the Haskell. Nick, I, I like a horse in here. I'm curious where you went. 
Yeah, I wish I was a little bit more clever. I, I think there's a decent enough amount of speed that it'll set up for horses like Arzak. Um, I like nothing better. I mean, I think I'm going to pick nothing better in, in the race itself, uh, just because I like that he showed the ability to sit just off the pace and win the mighty bow last time out at Churchill. I think uh, Jorge Duarte Jr. Is, is so good when it comes to turf sprints. And I think this horse has really always been a little underrated. He's very, very good. He landed in this race last year and there was just an insane amount of speed on paper. I think that really worked against him, but I don't know if they're going to go quite as quick this time around. I think that might be more in his favor um, as he should be either on the lead or probably stalking a horse like that's right. Who's now first off a claim by Brittany Russell. Um, but I, so I'm going to go there. I'm going to use the two favorites and I'm going to keep it relatively simple, uh, but I'm interested in hearing any price alternatives. No doubt about it. Well, I don't know how much of a price the one's going to be uh, Iman, but I just feel like he's been so much against it recently. Uh, you know, I thought that was a really nice race in the Shaker Town, uh, where close to be third at 20 to one. Uh, then, you know, ended up at Churchill on Derby Day and ran into Cogburn, really no chance in that race. And then, you know, Groom's All Business, I thought, you know, is a sharp one. Uh, you know, this is he just this horse runs late, has been against, I think, races where it just doesn't suit his style. And he's capable of beating these horses. I think the morning line's way low on him. Uh, I, and the the race is going to be, I think, messed up from a price standpoint anyway, because Arzak is going to be a huge favorite in this race, and especially coming off the, the Cogburn race and that, that record, you know, Jiper. A lot of horses have come out of that race to win. Uh, this horse ran very well there, but now you're going to have to eat three to five on this horse. And, uh, you know, I'm interested, especially if there's some speed that maybe the one finally gets a trip, maybe is able to finally close up. And, uh, you know, you could get a little separation in Maltese there. Yeah, just, you know, the, what you and I like, I, I've always admired Iman. I think he's a fun horse. The problem is just he makes it hard on himself, right? He's got a running style that generally is not conducive to uh, to being successful. I, I wish he had been given more opportunities throughout his career to run at a place like Belmont at six furlongs. because It feels like he'd really excel with every bit of that, that last 16th of a mile or, or so. But um, if they can keep him in training long enough for the new Belmont to be back in the fold, maybe that's when he can, can start to make a splash again. But uh, the rail also is really not a bargain either because he's guaranteed to almost get shuffled out a little bit more than if he had been outside. Uh, but I agree with you. I think his price will go up for sure. I think Arzak will go off no more than, than six to five in this race, even perhaps less. So that's why I'll, I'll opt for nothing better in the top slot. But I do think the uh, easily think the winner probably comes from those two with Iman maybe being a backup. Uh, race 10, grade three, Monmouth Cup. And uh, more picks, uh, you know, go off in this race. $300,000 guaranteed 50 cent pick five on those last five races. They're going a mile and an eighth on the dirt. I thought this was, uh, you know, uh, interesting. Four or against Highland Falls here. I want to be against, but I have to be for. He's just better than these horses when push comes to shove. And the problem with Tappet Trice is he's coming off a layoff. There's not a lot of speed in here. So how is Tappet Trice going to make a positive impact, right? He's a, he's a big loping bicycle horse. And, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how this horse runs in terms of efficiency after a 2023 campaign where it felt like they were just riding the skin off of him for the last six furlongs of every race. And I wonder in a way if maybe having a guy like Irad on board, who's a little bit more, you know, legs and lower half in terms of riding than he is arms, whereas Saez, you're just going to see driving away the whole time. Maybe Tappet Trice is a horse that needs to just be allowed to settle and move uh, a bit more so, but it'll be, hopefully he runs too, right? We've seen him entered, I think at least twice, um, mm -hmm. only to not run. So I hope he's back, but Highland Falls is just in very good form right now. Obviously didn't run in the Stephen Foster after winning the blame because his stable mate first mission was going to end up running in the Foster. So Highland Falls has enough tactical speed to stay close. I don't think the pace works against him. I mean, he's six to five on the morning line. He feels like a horse that could be two to five in here. I mean, if, if, Tappet Trice doesn't take his Tappet money. Trice doesn't go. Exactly right. I should say if Tappet Trice goes, he's probably yeah. four to five. He's a very likely winner. Yeah. I, I mean, Tappet Trice is, it's hard not to like as far as a horse goes, but it's, it's hard to bet. You, you really, you know, you don't really want him necessarily, but to, to see him as a horse and to see, you know, like his bluegrass win and, and last year and just the way that Tampa Derby where he was, you know, that I thought that was a really nice performance and, 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 you know, he, he held his own in those triple crown races. Uh, it just, he just, you know, grinds and grinds and grinds. That's what kind of horse he is. 
I'd be curious to see what happens with him with Irad on, um, you know, because when he was a little closer into bluegrass, I thought he raced well, you know, that was, that was a different kind of ride for him. Um, I don't know. I, like you said, though, it's hard to look past Highland Falls. He's just right now in the best form, keeping the best company. And uh, the only other horse, and I'm curious your take on, on the, the six surface to air. Now, I don't know that he can necessarily win the race. And obviously this is a huge class test for this horse, but since the claim two nice wins, two, very uh, big increases in buyer figures. And now they show up in this race uh, to take a shot. I mean, you know, if you're looking for exact uh, trifecta partners for some of these horses, I don't mind horses like this. No, I agree. I think you could definitely do worse um, than try one at a big price like this. You know, I think one of the, one of the things that I've tried to be a little bit more cognizant of in this day and age is that these horses like this that are getting good, especially for smaller time barns, a lot of times their Achilles heel is coming off Lasix. Mm -hmm. And that would be my concern with this horse. There's no doubt. I mean, after getting claimed by thir for 30, he has run two dramatically improved races uh, for, for Panajo to Senefius. And we'll see if he ends up being good enough, but he's going to be a big price. And if you think he might just have enough speed to stay close and can end up hanging around for a piece of it, you could do worse than to throw him into the exacta. Yeah, interesting race, especially, I think, on the bottom end there. Let's go to race number 11, and this is one of my favorite races. Uh, it's the Great Two United Nations. They're going a mile and, a th mile and three eighths on the turf. Very, very, very wide open race, Nick. I I'm curious. I think the, the favorite could be, you know, four to one in this race. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think, uh, I think we could see a favorite around that level. Um, I'm not sure why on the morning line running B is a longer price than Tawny port um, given the way that all of that shook out last time out. And I say that in large part because I love Tawny port. I'm, this is going to be one of my, my bigger bets on the day. Um, this is a horse who I think to look at the running line and try and make a determination in the Monmouth of how this horse ran is a huge mistake. This horse ran significantly better than it looks on paper. That was a fast pace that totally incinerated. He was always involved in it. He kept getting shoved into the race by his rider. He made a winning move off the far turn. He ultimately lost in a photo. And now he's going back to what he wants to do, which is to go long. And he's getting Flavian Pratt, which lately has been the, you know, the, the antidote of all. So um, I, I think this horse is going to be able to settle, make one move from off the pace. I like that style for him. And I, he's he's a horse I'm looking forward to betting. I really thought the horses that you wanted to try as alternatives to him were probably what are going to end up being the two favorites, Web Slinger and Far Bridge. I don't know how Far Bridge is going to take to a mile and three eighths. I also believe still that Far Bridge's best races have come when he's been inside. And I don't know how the hell he's going to get to the inside from the 12 with a furlong and a half run to the first turn. But that's what they're going to try and do. So um, I think Web Slinger also showed that the mile and three eighths was well within his scope. The problem, Mike, and I know this sounds a little too granular, Luis Saez is a terrible fit for this horse. I mean, mm -hmm. Luis Saez is, is a front-oriented speed dirt jockey, and you're talking about an off-the-pace horse going long on the turf. I mean, they must really have been so frustrated with the way Castellano rode this horse in the past that they didn't want to give him another opportunity. And Maybe he opted for Grand Sonata being a, a Todd Fletcher horse, but – this is a horse that needs to save ground. He needs to be able to, to wait and produce one run. And I just don't like Sias for him whatsoever, but I do think his best race is making competitive. Well, Cassie certainly is hot right now. Uh, Sias not so much. And I, I know that uh, you haven't been a fan of his, his rides recently reading some of uh, your content. Um, my thoughts are that maybe what web slinger, likes Churchill. He he looks like a Churchill lover to me, especially on that, you know, kind of course that has been different recently. I mean, his best races are at Churchill Downs. So maybe that could be the case. I, I do think he could be a little overbet in the race. Uh, Tony Port, I don't know what kind of ride you get, but I know you're getting Pratt uh, or what kind of price I mean you get. You're, you're getting Pratt here now. And, and like you said, the horse raced better than it really looks on paper last time. My problem with him is he just doesn't win that much. Uh, one win in the last two years. So it, it seems like he he needs things to go his way. So I, I'm going to look prices. Um, I'm going to try Adama. I know that you know he won this race last year. He was coming into this race last year far better than he is this year, but maybe got a prep last time. Uh, was flying late to be beat less than two lengths. And you know you got Chad, you get the Tory now here. Uh, we know that he likes this racetrack. We know he wants the distance. So I, I think that that horse probably could get a little lost on the board. 
I think the three gets Smokin's another horse that's going to be forwardly placed here and has a chance at 12 to one. Here's another Cassie. Uh, that Eclipse Stakes, those are nice horses up there. You know, Paramount Prince came back to gallop out of that race uh, at Woodbine on June the, the 1st. And, and then, you know, his Kentucky Down race going a mile and a half back last year in September was was quite good. You know he's going to be forward. I think he's going to be need to be caught. I'm just curious, you know, what does Emmanuel do? Does, does he press on the front with his horse? Um, where's the other speed going to come from? And, uh, you know, maybe the eight here is another one that could produce some speed. So I think that if the three's able to get a front end type trip and gets left alone, that he's very, very dangerous in the race. And then the only other horse that I thought maybe was the 11 starting over uh, maker starting to heat up. This horse wants the distance has a win over the racetrack. Maybe doesn't have some of the class that a lot of these others do, but you, you never know with it with Mike maker horses. Uh, they don't necessarily have to have class. It just has to be kind of the right day. I think for him. Yeah, I mean, look, Mike Maker won this race last year with a horse that that looked like he probably wanted to sprint on the turf. So, I mean, I never underestimate Mike Maker doing this. Uh, and the therapist is the horse I'm talking about. Um, I never underestimate Mike Maker in a long distance turf race. My issue with starting over is that you know he won the McDermott in early March. He missed a ton of opportunities to run since then. So I don't know what went wrong. It's basically a matter of how much you trust Maker off the bench. Um, I think it'll be a, a relatively fast paced race for the distance. I've never really been much of a believer that Get Smoke and wants to go that far. And I think what carried him along at Kentucky Downs was the condition of the turf course and the fact that you can you can often get carried around there um, even at a distance like a mile and a half when the rail is good. So um, I think they'll move well enough. The other thing, to be honest with you, Mike, is if it's not that fast, it's good for my horse. So mm -hmm. I don't think Talkport wants to be all that far off of it. I'm just hoping that Pratt gets him to settle into a nice, easy beat, and, and he can ultimately pounce on him late. That is a very good race. Well, let's move to the big one. Great one, Haskell. Uh, Mount and eighth on the dirt, going for a million bucks. And we were talking off air, and uh, you, you say fierceness out, uh, most likely mind frame in. That's my understanding. I mean, that's sort of what they laid out at draw time was that fierceness was only going to go if there was some kind of issue with mind frame. It has gotten a little bizarre that they're still talking about it as of today that, you know, there's a van taking mind frame and Tuscan Sky down and there's a backup van ready tomorrow. It's almost like, what what are you expecting to happen? Like is, you know, is mind frame some kind of lunatic that that doesn't like take care of himself and, and is going to potentially do something that can make him scratch it. I don't quite get it. Um, I, I don't, I also don't understand the fascination with trying to lead people to believe that these two horses are going to run against each other. It makes no sense for them to run against each other at all when the Jim Dandy is next week. And, you know, I'll, I'll sort of believe it when I see it, that fierceness is even running again, period. I know he's training, so I'm hopeful that he does. And they see, there's no, no reason for him not to, but um, I think mind frame will go quite honestly, Mike, and I think mind frame will win. I don't, I don't think I'll be so bold as to say mind frame will never lose to door knock again. I'll be very, very surprised if that happens. I think it happened last time out because mind frame lacked the seasoning. And I don't know where the hell that race from door knock came from. Look at his thoroughgraph sheets. Look at his buyer figures. Look at his time form us figures. That race was so dichotomous in terms of, of, of lining it up against anything else he had done. I have no clue where it came from, but I'm going to bet against it ever happening again. I thought it was completely idiotic to hear that his trainer felt like the rail was a problem and he might scratch because he drew the rail. I mean, now we're at a point where speed horses having the inside and dirt routes is a problem. I mean, come on, this is just silly. So I don't see this horse really being much of a factor. And I think the key in the race is to play some exactas and tries trying to beat door knock out of it all together. That's what I'll do. I think the interesting horse, and I don't want to ramble about this too much, but I think the interesting horse in here is Timberlake because I tweeted this the other day and was alluding to it. This is not a Brad Cox type of move. This is not something we've seen him do with any regularity. This horse is coming back off a four-month layoff, nearly four-month layoff, following a somewhat dull Arkansas Derby in a grade one and a mile and an eighth. And he's a horse who I think the, the barn had even almost – sort of insinuated that he might not want to go that far, but now they're running him a mile and an eighth off the bench. If the goal is a cutback to a race like the Allen Jerkins, then that's great. But he is just, he, there's too many, there's too much interesting components or, or, or there's too much that's interesting. I should say about him being in here for me to exclude him altogether. Yeah. And, and Pratt lands here too. Uh, you know, uh, that's, that's interesting. I know that uh, JK really liked this horse last year coming out of that champagne. I, I think that, you know, he basically had his BCBC riding on this horse last year, and and he's shown he's talent. He's shown ability. Jonathan bet him in this race. He's you got to be you got to be three to one or less to get Jonathan's uh, motor. <laughs> um, I I agree with 
to you on mind frame. I'm curious the trip though. I, I you are you thinking maybe stalking just outside Doorknock? I I do think that that's probably the uh the preferred and uh, basically easiest trip he could possibly get and uh, uh you know try to take over I, you would think that he's got to get better with a little bit of age and seasoning i mean that you know he, he nearly won the belmont off two starts and stepping into grade one and really if he doesn't take a couple sideways steps he probably does win that race so he he looms large the only horse to me that i thought was interesting maybe was tuscan sky uh, I like that Pegasus, you know, in the prep. I, I thought that this horse really in, took a step forward, uh, you know, improved. And Pletcher shows up here when he has other horses in this race, basically the top one. So, you know, he could find another spot for this horse. I think they want to kind of see what they have with him. And, you know, maybe not as good as Mind Frame, yes, but uh, he could be very interesting and, you know, a factor later in the year, especially if he can take another step forward. And, you know, these late developing three-year-olds, I mean, it's not unprecedented. Yeah, I thought he had kind of a soft trip last time out, but it was nice to see him rebound from the Wood Memorial. I do think the water's a lot deeper, but Todd was pretty much obligated to try the horse in here based on uh, on how well he ran in the Pegasus, the other Pegasus, if you will. Um, so I, I could see this horse maybe being a factor for an underneath slot and ultimately could be a decent enough handicap horse down the line as the division thins out a bit. So, uh, yeah, I just I feel like mind frame will probably be it'll be interesting to see what Pratt does with Timberlake. I think Timberlake will likely show some speed. Uh, I think I think, you know, Gargan's beef is that he wants doorknock stalking. And you're not stalking from the rail, right? You're you're doing the heavy lifting. Um, the best thing for Doorknock would just be to go try and establish the pace. I don't really know why he'd want him to stalk, given how poorly he ran when he gave up too much ground early. This is a horse that wants to be engaged, right? He's fast early. That's his weapon. Use it. And if you go out and try and establish, it'll just be a matter of how much pressure you get from Tuscan Sky, Timberlake, and and perhaps even a little bit of mind frame, maybe more in a in a, in a you know second flight type of role. Uh, but I think mind frame will find himself somewhere where he's ready to pounce around the three eighths pole and sort of go on with it from there. Yeah, I mean, I agree on Durnock. I mean, his two best races, I mean, the Remsen where he fought back against Sierra Leone, and then uh, the Belmont where he got the jump on on mind frame, and and uh, ultimately, you know, he couldn't catch him. So I don't understand the speed, man. Use that speed. It's, it's right. that's something you want to leave at home. Well, it's, I think it's an interesting race, and they're going for a million bucks. It's going to start to set up that three-year-old division the rest of the year. Uh, lots of great wagering uh, at, at Monmouth this weekend. Uh, Nick, how involved are you going to get? Yeah, looking forward to it. I think that pick five is actually fun at the end of the card. I think there's a, a likely single in the last race, the far outside horse fancy Azteca. My analysis for uh, – Mammoth will be up at Twin Spires. You can catch it there. And uh, yeah, I'll definitely be involved in these stakes. I think the sequence is a little bit too, I find it to be a little too narrow for me to not play. And I got to bet Tawny Port. So uh, I'll certainly be involved uh, as we continue on headed towards the Travers. Yeah, it's an exciting summer. Nice to see these three-year-olds get back at it. Uh, great card Saturday at Monmouth. And uh, this has been a production of In the Money Media. We'd like to thank Nick for joining us on much short notice, despite uh, computer woes for other people. Uh, we'll see you guys next time. Enjoy the Haskell.